Um, okay, so my name is uh, Soil Dirtin Sanja. So I'm from Mongolia. So introducing in brief about myself is uh, I uh, work at the Mongolian State University of uh, National University of Education. Um, I've been working there for uh, since 2003. So today, uh, this presentation is joint presentation. So um, uh, today I'm going to present about the uh, learner autonomy and uh, about the Mongolian example. So example of uh, the Mongolian, uh, uh, the students of Mongolian National University of Education. So I'm very glad to be here to present uh, my ideas and thoughts with uh, all of you. So here is my uh, presentation content. So first, um, I'm going to talk about the introduction. And next one is what the learner autonomy is. And uh, I'm going to introduce a, um, a reflective journal and its importance. So, uh, and reflective models and types of uh, reflective journals and reflective journal entries. So I um, uh, got a small uh, minor research uh, from my students. And then, so I'm going to discuss about the conclusion and finally, references. Okay, so first and foremost, um, uh, since the democratic reform uh, in 1990, so Mongolia has faced many challenges in its social and economic and political framework. So all have impacted upon education. So uh, democracy brought us positive changes for example, increased openness, freedom of choice, new interactive methodologies, and more flexible curriculum, and so on. So despite a well-articulated national curriculum and standards framework, there are some critical challenges in catering an effective learning environment, promoting independence and ownership of learners within the learning process, and competent teacher preparation to provide the assistance required to support change. So uh, one of the challenges facing uh, in teacher education in Mongolian institutions and in, uh, institutions and in, uh, specifically in our university is to develop student capacity for independent analytical thinking and introduce adequate assessment of student teacher learning on a continuous basis. So learn autonomy can be developed through a focus of uh, self-reflection in students' own um, learning process, so which has become a recent focus in language teaching. Okay, so um, the aim of this presentation is uh, we are going to present some ideas about our own experiences as English language learner and teacher and how and now teacher educator provide personal insight into the many challenges in developing both language skills and learn autonomy in the context of Mongolia. Okay, so here is the key uh, words of uh, uh, my presentation. Learn autonomy and current issues in TESOL and reflective journal. Okay, so first, I'm going to introduce a, um, a review of the related literature about the learner autonomy. So here is uh, uh, some definitions of uh, learner autonomy from the different perspectives from different uh, uh, researchers. So first, in 1985, for Mali, Shamal, Stuner, Mazaranis, Russo, and Cooper, they defined the learner learn autonomy as a, a, it's a planning for learning. And it's uh, thinking about learning process and it's um, monitoring of comprehension or production. And also he defined, they defined that learn autonomy is self-evaluation of uh, students' own learning. And in terms of Littlewood in 1999, so he defined that uh, uh, learn autonomy is thinking about thinking. And as for Livingstone in 2003, uh, he defined that uh, uh, learn autonomy is a development of self-system process. And it, it is also to take responsibility for uh, students for their, or their, own, their, own, their own learning. 
Okay, so uh, learn autonomy and metacognitive skill and also reflective skill, uh, they all connected uh, to each other. They interact with each other. So in this uh, presentation, so I'm going to um, um, show, I'm going to present about my a little research on how uh, students reflect their own learning in language class. So uh, first of all, so I, I would like to share uh, what the learning, uh, what the reflective journal in language learning. So Dewey in 1933, so he defined that it's an active, persistent and careful consideration of any belief or sup uh, supposed form of knowledge in light of the grounds that support it and the further conclusions to which it tends. Sean in 1987, so he explained the concept of reflection as a conservation between thought and action. And in terms of uh, assumption in fleet in 1996, so ref reflective processes allow the learners to be looking back on their experiences, decisions, and actions. So recognizing values and beliefs underlining these actions and decisions. So considering the consequences and implications of belief and action, exploring possible alternative and reconsidering former views. And next researcher, um, Bolton in 2001 and Moon, and Moon in 1999. So writing reflective journals can specifically enhance reflective practices in the academic learning field. So students can spend more time to consider carefully their learning experiences and revise their journals within honest feelings through writing practice. And Park also defined uh, in 2003, reflective journal importance of the, uh, as uh, the importance of reflective journals focusing on the process of learning and enhancing students' performance rather than the product. And Watson in 2010, students think critically um, about their learning by writing reflective journals. Okay, and uh, in terms of Jarvis in 2001, journal writing is a great device, so which allows people to look back at what they have been thought and reflect on their feelings and attitudes. And Thorpe in 2004, reflective journals are used in many courses as written logs of students' thoughts about specific concepts in their learning process. In the Sherema in 2007 and Stevenson Cooper in 2009, the journal writing is a great device which allows people to look back at what they have been thought and reflect on their uh, feelings and attitudes. So why is a reflective journal important? So now we're going to look at the importance of a reflective journal. So reflection gives meaning to experience to, uh, the, to the students. So it turns experience into practice and link past and present experiences. It also prepares the individual for future practice. And it also helps the teachers to become adaptive and it engages students in self-monitoring. And the reflective thinking process is critical to problem solving and to professional practice. OK, so now uh, we're going to um, show some uh, models of the reflective journal writing. So first, this is a um, Kolb's model in 1994. And Kolb's model is about the reflective model is referred to as experiential learning. So the basis for this model is our own experience and which is then reviewed, analyzed and evaluated systematically in three stages. And now this is a Gibbs reflective model in 1988. So students can uh, use this uh, reflective model in um, so reflecting on their own learning. So first they source first about the description. So what happened, and they can um, uh, answer to the questions uh, related to the feeling, 
what were you thinking about uh, and feeling? Evaluation, so what was good and bad about the experience? And next uh, cycle is uh, analysis. What else can you make of the situation? And conclusion part, so what else could you have done? An action plan, if it rose again, what would you do? So I use uh, uh, this uh, model in uh, my uh, class, in, uh, in language class. So um, Gibbs model, so Prof Professor Graham Gibbs published his uh, um, reflective cycle in uh, his 1988, so book Learning by Doing. So teachers can use it to help students make sense of situations in class so uh, they can understand what they did well and what they could do better in the future. And here is a Dewey's model, reflective model. I also use this in my classroom. So um, uh, here is uh, five stages of this cycle. Um, first one is experience, the activity, perform and do it. And second stage is sharing, reactions, observations, and publicly uh, observations publicly. And third stage is process, so analyzing the experience. And fourth stage is generalizing, so to connect the experience to pra into practice. And the last one is applying part, so what was learned to a similar or different situations. So this is a practical part of this cycle. So Dewey's, in terms of John Dewey's, uh, Dewey's thought to be the founder of a reflection as it relates to uh, personal learning. So he suggested that uh, reflection for learning should include recalling the event and then posing questions to explore why things turned out the way they did and what possible actions could have given in a different outcome. Okay, so um, now I'm going to show you um, uh, some effective journal types for the classroom. So first one is dialogue journal. So students can um, use a dialogue, dialogue journal. Teachers and students also can use the dialogue journal in uh, their classroom. So this journal can be used as an interactive means uh, between teachers and learners for writing dialogues. So this is useful for learners at all levels. They can, they can use their free and uncensored expressions without being worried about grades. And for teachers, these journals can provide the means to collect information on students' views, beliefs, and attitudes, and motivation related to a class or a program to the process involved in learning various language skills. And next um, journal is about the class interactive journal. So interactive journal, team journal. So this journal is a variation of the class interactive journal. So this is a journal identified by Goldsmith in 1996. So this serves as a method for communicating and sharing ideas and events between and among small groups of students. So uh, this journal also provides a forum for students uh, to interact among themselves. And in class, interactive journal, the student shares his or her written refle reflections with classmates and receives feedbacks from the teacher and from other students and subsequently constructs a written reflection considering classmates' input. And next uh, um, journal, type is the personal journal. The personal journal is generally a narrative description of students' inner processes. So this intrapersonal looping of ideas may be self-affirming, but not, not necessarily productive. So as Brooksfield mentioned, posited. A self-confirming cycle often develops whereby our uncritical accepted assumptions shape actions that then only serve to confirm the truth of those assumptions. And the personal journal can have limited application for classroom use or professional development. All right, so now I'm going to show you a focus on reflective journal entries. 
So in the journal, I use the um, dialogue journal and as well as self self reflective journal uh, for my students. And uh, so in this uh, small um, research, uh, all uh, six participants uh, were volunteered age aged over 18 years old. And participants in this group were six pre-service student, teacher, student teachers of the Mongolian National University of Education. So who are studying in the English German languages department. So from the second, third and fourth course. Okay, so uh, the, um, we uh, gave them a, some reflective questions. So there were uh, six questions. So first one is what and how did you learn from the lesson and what helped you to study successfully and what tasks and activities did you do in order to improve English language skills independently. And fourth question is what difficulties or problems do you face when you learn English, what are the causes and how do you solve the problems, what are the steps and strategies will you use to solve the problems or difficulties. So from these six questions, so uh, six students answered in their own um, thoughts and attitudes. Okay, so here is a, um, a focus on reflective journal entries. So this is a sample uh, from a sophomore students and the very interesting um, answers from the uh, different, you know, uh, students from different, uh, um, courses. So first question, so participant one and two, they answered to this question like this. So what did you learn from the lesson? How did you learn it? So participant one uh, answered, before I focused English grammar a lot rather than memorizing new words. So therefore I thought that it's really important to study grammatical structure. And participant two answered to the question that, after completing grammar exercises by searching on the internet, I look at that the key answers to self-check. And um, participant uh, one, uh, he, he or she answered to the question, second question, what helped you to study successfully? And I was not that good at English when I was at the secondary school. So I didn't get high score of final graduation exam to study at this university yet. I got medium score and entry to this university. So it seems to me that my level of English was very low compared to other students. Therefore, I thought I need to work hard to improve my English. And second participant answered to the question that, as for me, my parents and Two teachers are the people who motivate and push me to study successfully. And what tasks and activities did you do in order to improve English language skills? <clears throat> so they answered to the question that today I have read four books by listening and following the typescripts. So before these books, I finished reading three tales by listening. I really liked watching a movie with subtitles yesterday. So this helped me to improve speaking and listening skills. So therefore I'm going to watch another movie within, uh, with subtitles again. And second participant answer to the question that, when I have a spare time, I watch movies with subtitles. After watching a whole movie I repeat, repeatedly, I try to con concentrate on new phrases and words to understand it fully. So very interesting answers they gave, um, the answer to the question. And next question is about the difficulties. And what difficulties or problems do you face when you learn English? What are the causes? So participant one answered that, I cannot concentrate on my study in noisy and dirty environment. So it's difficult to me. So I get depressed and uh, cannot do anything when I am down. And second, uh, participant answer to the question that since I have been a sophomore student, so teachers focused on our communication skills or spoken language and let us speak freely by dividing us into teams and peer teaching activities to one another. So at the beginning, I thought that I am not good at listening and did not understand where I should start 
and how I should complete the listening task successfully. So I tried to uh, translate every single word into Mongolian language. And in terms of uh, the question number five, how do you solve the problems? And in order to solve the problems, I go to the quiet place and concentrate on my study. And I try to avoid thinking about bad things and always try to forget them. And second participant answer to this question that I try to memorize new words every day. So because it seemed to me that the more I learn new words by um, hearing, uh, the more uh, possibilities to express myself freely. So when I have a free time, I memorize new words. So therefore I have found listening and speaking tasks from my sister to improve my language skills by practicing constantly. And the last question was about the, what are the steps and strategies will you use to solve the problems or difficulties? And first participant um, answered to the question that, I always want to learn something from the lesson or tasks. So it's easier for me to write rather than reading and listening because I understand <clears throat> when I write or make notes. So also I started to be aware of listening skills and it's uh, very important to improve my language skills. And uh, from the uh, second uh, participant, uh, I prefer to ask advice from others to understand the meaning deeply. I think that one of the best ways to uh, find solutions to the problems is to do, uh, discuss with others, such as what works well and what doesn't work while learning English. So I learn things by writing, so I make notes what I saw. <clears throat> so here is a reflective journal entries um, um, jun from junior uh, students. And they didn't understand um, the first question, what did you learn from the lesson and how did you learn? So they didn't answer to the question, to, to these questions. And from the second question, so maybe I can read, um, I, can sh I, I can discuss about the uh, participant one. Um, if what happened, you, what, hap what helped you to study successfully? And he, he or she answered that when I, forget something that I know I prefer asking advice from the friends first rather than teachers. So one of the best ways not to ask advice from friends to learn independent, independent, independently. Okay, and the third question is what tasks activities did you do in order to improve English language skills independently? So a few years ago, I started listening to and translating English songs. So from this time, I realized that learning English became my interest. So nowadays I have been changing my interest by watching English movies with subtitles. So this helped me to improve my listening and comprehension skills. And uh, um, uh, from the uh, second participant, so uh, he answered to the question uh, from the second question that people always need motivational words to go forward. So I try my best when I am encouraged to do something by others. So one of the keys uh, to learn language successfully is I should know how to self-assess correctly. So having a little bit anx uh, anxiety give us motivation to work hard. And then um, participant to answer to the question number three that, so when I'm free, I listen to the songs that I'm interested in and trans translate them into Mongolian language in order to comprehend. So I think that not only studying English, but also doing other thing with own strategies helped me to save the time. So I, I improved my speaking rapidly by teaching others confidently and without anxiety. So at that time, so junior students, um, they uh, had the teaching practical and so, and they, answered, they reflected on their teaching as well. And from the um, uh, question number four, uh, the problems related to the problems and difficulties, they mentioned that. So I have a problem within using grammar correctly. So I, I make grammatical mistakes. Most of the weekends I feel relaxed and sometimes I become lazy. 
and participant to uh, answer that. There are some busy time, although I'm exhausted. So if I watch movie with subtitles, I con concentrate more on reading without improving, improving my listening skills. So it seems to me that the most boring subject was pronunciation class and being nervous depends on look, um, a lack of preparation. And in terms of question number five, uh, they answer that in order to gain experience of teaching, I would like to work as an assistant English teacher in language uh, training center. I think that the more I teach what I learn to others, the more I understand well. And next um, participant answered that I'm reducing my anxiety by taking advice from the teachers, such as what should I concentrate on? and how to self-direct and how to improve my language. So I try to improve myself by listening to songs in English, learning new vocabulary, linking words and phrases. And at least I understand one word from the sentence. I need to work hard to improve myself. So watching movies several times until I understand help, helps me to understand the movie fully. And in terms of the last question, so they answered that. It said that if I learn language uh, with peers, it will be advantageous. So in my opinion, this is actually true because it, help, it is helpful for talkative students like me. And second participant answered that, today I listened to the song who lives in the USA. So I learned new phrase, every day I'm happy to be. I and repeat the phrase, two to three times, and then prepare to put the phrase into practice. So I make several sentences in order to use in different situations later. So I say to myself that I have finished all my works. So I am happy to be, to uh, calm myself down. Okay, so this is the senior students uh, sample. So and um, senior students, they, um, had the IELTS class, so they, they reflected on their own uh, classes. And uh, so interestingly, so first question, in terms of the first question, participant uh, answered to the question that. So today I attended the IELTS speaking class. So teacher asked us questions and we answered to the questions. And I also asked some advice on how to write the portfolio. And uh, uh, participant two, I learned how to take an IELTS exam and knew my language level from the results of the exam. So I realized, or realized that what mistakes I did on each part of the test. And second question, so what helped you to study successfully? So successfully study depends on me and teachers and friends and my family helped me a lot. And uh, next participant answered to the question that what I really liked from the reading was about the art article, love what you are doing. So I need to think about the opportunities I could have in the future after learning many things. So I need to love learning English first. And in terms of third question, so um, I need to concentrate on my memorizing new vocabulary, reading a lot, gather new information and uh, analyzing on them. And second participant answered, uh, I have decided to listen to the British Council podcast every day. And it has an advantage to listen when we have, to inter when, when we have no internet connection. So I know that slow progress depends on practicing every day. So therefore I practice doing listening and reading tasks for at least 20 minutes. And I need to conclude um, from uh, conclude my um, uh, reflective journal. This is the summary of the uh, reflective journal entries. So it can be summarized uh, from these reflections that it's, it's crucial for teachers to know the students' beliefs and perceptions about uh, language learning and to encourage the learners' positive beliefs about language learning, enhancing their confidence and autonomy, and finally directing them to study outside the classroom as well as inside the classroom. So we can see that So um, there are many strategies that the students use and students want to use in, the cl in their classroom. And in order to concentrate on my own teaching and pedagogy, so using participants' reflective journals, so I first needed to access to the participants' thoughts 
and ideas about their language learning difficulties and strategies they use to improve their language and how teachers might help them in, in the class in further. So students mostly use the, you know, the, the dialogue journal type in their uh, reflection. And from the journal entries, so it was evident that uh, participants know their difficulties in learning a language and they try to find their own strategies to improve their language skills. So on a reflection, so they mentioned their weaknesses of learning language so that themes could be uh, established uh, that teachers could then investigate in more thorough detail. So this period of reflection became a valuable time for teachers to understand more about challenges and dilemmas they faced in an effort to address them. Okay, so from pedagogical perspectives, the main focus on, of the reflective journal is to help learners to be aware of their confidence and to be motivated and to develop their ability to control their own learning. So, and the ability to think analytically and learn independently calls for learners to be purposeful, strategic, and persistent in language learning, so as well as to have more adaptive cognitive process and willingness to take charge of uh, their own learning. And reflective journaling is also important to note that identifying and analyzing the potential of self-assessment for learners to plan strategies and control their own actions, procedures, and part of self-regulated learning practice. So it also uh, helped to increase students' learning autonomy and help them acquire knowledge authentically. Okay, so here is the um, uh, conclusion, so part of my presentation, and there is some reference, references that I used. And thank you very much for uh, listening.